still maintain to this day that because I read so many Nancy Drew books, that's what sort of lit the spark in me to want to do investigative work and be a journalist because as you all know, when you read, you can be anyone. You can do anything. Reading is the foundation, it's the inspiration to make you want to chase your dreams. And that's what I did because of what I was reading when I was a kid. And now that I'm doing what I always wanted to do, reading is so imperative on a day-to-day -day basis. You think I know everything that I have it all up here? No, not so. I have to read scripts. I have to read newspapers. I have to read what's going on in our community, what's going on in our country, and what's going on in the world. And that all started when I was a kid, where you have to read. And so that's why it's so uh, exciting that I'm here to be a part of it, just to pass that message along and help to inspire everyone else in the community to do the same, the next generation, because you never know where it's going to take you. And that is a fact. So please join me in welcoming Walter Dean Myers. From the beginning of the Hudson Children's Book Festival in 2009, the directors have relied on an army of volunteers, organizations, and businesses to ensure its su success. Today, the Hudson Children's Book Festival would like to thank the members of this community who have come forward to help in so many ways. The festival directors have asked me to recognize the three major Hudson Children's Book Festival sponsors. Without their participation, this day would not be possible. It is my pleasure to call to the podium those sponsors to receive a special plaque from the directors of the Hudson, Ch Hudson Children's Book Festival. Roger Coleman. CEO of the Hudson Catskill Newspaper Corporation. <laughs> Dennis Marino, founder of Investments in Youth. Mr. Jack Howell, Superintendent of Schools for the Hudson City School District. Thank you. Just, just a couple of brief words. Uh, uh, we've talked a lot about reading, so, so reading obviously is important. I do thank our major sponsors, Hudson Catskill Newspapers, uh, Investments in Youth. The school district is proud to host this every year, and hopefully we will, we will be doing it for many, many more, I agree. But I want to uh, say a very special thank you to the Army, and it really is an army of volunteers that will begin probably tomorrow planning next year without them. And, and they're here, and they're out there, and they'll be around all day. This couldn't happen. So thank you very much to that Army. Uh, this has been a, a marvelous journey for me. Um, in January of this year, uh, with the support of the Children's Book Council and the Every Child a Reader Foundation, the Library of Congress appointed me, Walter D. Myers, <laughs> the third national ambassador for young people's literature. And it, And for me, it was an amazing event, and it's been an, an amazing journey. Because I started off, as a three-year-old, I started off reading as a three-year-old in Harlem, New York, in a, well, in a, in a foster family. Um, my name is not Walter Dean Myers, it's Walter Milton Myers, but I was raised by the Dean family. My dad could not read or write. My mom read sparingly, but she read to me every day. And she read top-of-the-line stuff, 
true romance magazines. <laughs> I didn't know much about what was going on in those magazines, but I loved the time I spent with her. I loved sitting on her lap, following her as, she, as her finger traced the words across the page. By the time I was five, I had picked up enough words so that I could read to her as she ironed and washed. And that's where my journey began. I didn't know that I was learning. I wasn't aware that she was teaching me something wonderful. I don't think that she knew it either. But she invested the time. She invested her interest in true romance. And after, after true romance, we graduated to my sister's comic books. We moved right along. And my adventure in books began with that woman in that small Harlem apartment. And it has taken me so far. And sometimes, when, as I look back, I wonder, how did I get here today? I've published 105 books. 105 books, did he say? <laughs> I've published 105 books. I was up this morning at 5 o'clock working on number 106, which I will have finished shortly. Uh, and I've had a marvelous life. I have not gone out to work since 1977. <laughs> Can you believe that? <laughs> I have been given the opportunity to live a life of books. I have been given the opportunity to live a life of literature, a life of the mind. And it began with one woman who completed the third grade working with one young boy that she took to raise. This is a marvelous story. It's been a, more than a marvelous journey. What I do every day of my life, I'm up at 5 o'clock every morning. I'm making coffee. I'm feeding my wife's ugly cat. <laughs> <laughs> and then I begin this work this, 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 that I do. I'm composing stories, I'm making up stories, I'm perfecting stories, I'm outlining stories. This is my life. I try to explain this to a group of second graders in Harlem. I try to explain what I, what I do. And a second grader said to me, you spend all day long working, making people happy. Do you ever think that maybe someone should pay you for this? <laughs> I said, actually, <laughs> they pay me amazingly well for doing what I love to do. In the second, same second grade class, I was asked, what will I do when I retire? And I thought about it, and what I will do when I retire, is to go back to what I love. That's writing. <laughs> Except you'll know I'm retired because when the checks come, I'll send them back. <laughs> I don't know if my wife is going to go along with, with, this, with this program or not. Uh, what I do is I have a very few ideas. I am concerned about the welfare of our young people. I'm concerned about the welfare of the world and how to solve it. I write books and my ideas don't change, they mature. They mature. 
My newest book is called All the Right Stuff, and it's about the social contract. I've taken Rousseau and Hobbes and Locke and tried to translate these people for inner city use, because I think it's needed. Right now, we are going through what is actually a crisis. We are going through a crisis in which a few of our children are reading exceptionally well, but so many are having difficulties. And this is not a New York City problem, a New York State problem, or even an American problem. It's, it's a worldwide problem as the societies break into those who are gifted and read well and those who are not. I've, I've been given the enviable position, an enviable opportunity to serve as national ambassador for two years. Same school, a kid said to me, two-year-old, an eight-year-old, second grade, he said, how long are you going to be national ambassador? I said, two years. He said, if you play your cards right, you can stretch it out. <laughs> I've, got, I've identified two areas that we need to be concerned about. The first is reading to babies between the ages of three months and five years. Because too many Too many of our children are beginning schools so far behind. And research shows that of the kids who are behind at five years old, only 15% ever make up the difference. The second is a group that so many people are giving up on. That is those kids from nine to 14 who are still behind. So many people are giving up on, the, on, the, on these kids. I see, again, in the UK, they are suggesting that kids be allowed to take vocational courses at the end of, four, the end of their 14th birthday because they're not going to do well academically. I think this is giving up. This is giving up. They're also suggested. They're also suggesting that they, they drop the A levels for kids, for some kids at 14 years old. Which and the A levels are our equivalent of the regents, and I think this is giving up. What I hope to do over the next two years is is to keep the conversation going, keep the conversation boiling over. I, I don't care if you get angry with me. I'm an old dude, I'm 74 years old. Get mad if you choose, <laughs> I don't care. But we need to have this conversation and we need to attend this problem. With your help, we will. Thank you.